But if you'd been in a shipwreck and you'd been in the water for a while and it's cold and it's and it's raining and and uh, uh, you're you're soaked and and I'm sure you would probably be very fearful and uh, you know you're freezing. Boy, wouldn't a fire be a wonderful thing to to come to wash up on the shore and and to find that there had been a fire that had been started for you. So that fire would do a lot of uh, a lot of good. It would have been of great benefit to these to these men as they were literally uh, uh, just barely saved. Their lives were just barely saved. And so this morning I want, I want us to use this, this, this story as a, as a prophetic way of, of learning some things the Lord wants to speak to us. Fire is a picture of the Holy Spirit. It's a scriptural picture of the Holy Spirit. The Bible uses different types and, and things to illustrate uh, truths. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we know that He's pictured as breath and wind and water and oil, but also as fire. And so fire is a very potent picture of the Holy Spirit and how He works in our lives. So as we look at this fire that these people, and, and, and just kind of in your mind you can see all these men, there's quite a few of them, huddled around this fire. And so this fire would, 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 would be for them a comfort. It would be for them, it would be after what they'd just been through, it would have been a real, a, a, you know, a, a reassuring thing to be able to uh, gather together with these other men and, and, and be around this fire and then to experience that warmth that that fire would give to them. And, and I want to say to you what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives is He wants to be the comforter. The Spirit of God wants to come into our life and give us that warmth that we need. Now, I'm not talking about religion. A lot of folks just think this is about religion, checking off some boxes. And, you, know, uh, you know, a lot of folks are unfortunately think that they think that what, what Christianity is all about is, is us just, we go to church and we read our Bibles and we do this and do that. But, that, but you know, uh, certainly those are things we do. But the reality is what the Holy Spirit does is He brings the reality of God into our life. He manifests the presence of the Lord in our life. There's nothing like having this wonderful experience with the Lord. Doctrine's good, but you're going to need more than doctrine. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you know, knowing some things, knowing some facts, that's good. Doing some things that, you know, we, got, we kind of have, you know, subscribed to us or prescribed to us to do. Uh, as believers, all of that's good. But but what's what really makes a difference is when we have that experience, when we when we feel God, we know He's real. We don't have any doubt about Him being real, and that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Amen. And then that fire did something else for them. It changed their condition. They went from being cold and wet to being warm and dry. And one of the things the Holy Spirit will also do in our lives is that He'll change us. You can't be, you can't allow the Holy Spirit into your life and let Him do what He wants to do and not be the same. You're, you're going to be changed. There's something that's going to happen in you when the Holy Spirit's allowed to work. He's going to, he's going to make you what you need to be, who you need to be. He's going to, he's going to deliver you from sin. He's going to, that's right, He's going to come to deliver us from those things that, that bind us that keep us in bondage, those things that, that, that keep us from enjoying that life that God wants us to enjoy. So He'll change our condition. And, and, that, and also you understand that there's probably dark, it's raining, that, that fire also provided for them light. God's interested in light from the beginning. Let there be light. And one of the things the Spirit of God's going to do is going to come into our life He's going to fill us with His presence and His power to be witnesses. I believe God wants us to be light for others. Amen. He wants us to be a, a, a sign, if you will, pointing to Jesus. 
Amen. And so the Spirit of God wants to use you to be a light bearer, to be a light giver, to be a reflector of the light of God. And then, of course, the, uh, another wonderful thing about that fire as, at, 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 once again, as you got that picture, hopefully in your mind, of that fire that's that's burning, and all these people gathering around this fire. Have you ever been to a bonfire? And lots of folks. It's 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 fun even to come around a fire. And, and I want to say that one of the things the Holy Spirit will do with us is He'll gather us together. Yes. Amen. You know, this morning, uh, hopefully for you, this was like coming to a bonfire. Not a literal bonfire, certainly, but but uh, uh, the, the the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of His people. We, we it, it brings us together, and so I believe that that helps us, and and, and that fire is there uh, to, to 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 enable us to be free from this cold world, to find within this uh, assembling of ourselves together, we can find. Help, encouragement. And so I think that's very important. So God needs His people to be on fire. Amen. He needs His people to be filled with the Spirit. Because of all these things I've just described to you, we desperately need that. We need that to work, uh, to be at work in our lives. And it's the Holy Spirit that makes that happen. Amen. And so we, we need that because God needs that. This world, God's answer for this cold world that we live in are believers who are hot. Amen. Excited about God. Changed by God's Spirit. That there's, de there's a very definite, clear change in us that the Holy Spirit has brought. So, so when you get into a situation where you really don't know what to do, one of the best things to do is to get this fire burning. If you feel like you've become spiritually cooled off for some reason, if, if, if worship is something that you just don't remember to do or, or prayer, you neglect prayer or, or you, have, you, know, you don't want to pick up your Bible and read it and, and going to church is just not something you want to do. Uh, listen, you probably are cooling off. You need your fire stoked up again. Amen. We need that desperately. We need to be on fire for the Lord. All right, now I want you to understand that the fire that, that they came to was already there, was already burning. And what Paul did is he went to get wood to, to, to keep that fire burning, to keep that fire going. That was, the, that, you know, if you, if you, if you uh, build a fire, how many knows that the tendency of that fire is going to always be to go out? And so for a fire to, 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 to burn, of course you have to start it. But then you're going to have to, if you're going to keep that fire burning, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to do some things. And that's what I'm getting at here this morning. Is that the fire of, uh, of the, the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, we have to attend to that. There's a role we play in keeping the Spirit of God working and moving in our life. There's certainly some very definite uh, uh, divine things here that we don't want to lose track of, but there's also some very clear things that you and I are going to have to do. Now, first of all, let me say, the Holy Spirit has been poured out. That's what we celebrate on, at Pentecost. He has come. He is here. And, and this is unlike any, you know, before when we read in the Bible, even in the time of Jesus, uh, on back, things were different. The Spirit of God has always been here, but the Spirit of God only worked in a certain way. And it was a come and go reality for the people of God. But let me say that now for you and I, as new covenant believers, saved, washed in the blood, delivered, born again, the Spirit of God is not a come and go kind of experience. He's always present. We, listen, there is a reality of grieving Him. There's a reality of quenching Him. No doubt. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But we need to understand that, that the Holy Spirit was given to us to abide with us 
forever. Amen. 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 And listen to me. You can't get bad enough that he completely leaves or you'd be in big trouble. He, I'm thankful that he is he's good and merciful and patient. Amen. And so no matter how bad of a day you have it, no matter how far you may have fell, if you're born again, what you'll find is when you turn and say, Spirit of God, I'm going to need you here. I need mercy. I need forgiveness. I need you to fix me. I need you to correct. He's right there to do that. Yes, yes. He's faithful. Yes. He is faithful. And so he's been given to us. He's, he's come to us uh, and here he is. We don't have to start a new fire. Uh, years ago, I can remember there was a house down the road from us that had caught fire and the fire department came and they caught it in time and they put this fire out and they went back to their station and that night the house burned down. And the house burned down because there was still an ember in there they missed. Okay? Your fire might get down to just an ember. <coughs> but if you'll build that fire, if you'll keep that fire going uh, somehow, put, put some more fuel on it, put some more wood on it, that fire will begin to burn again. Now in the Old Testament, when they put the tabernacle together for the first time, and they put the altar there uh, the, where they sacrificed the animals and then burned uh, the carcasses of those animals. There was a fire there. But did you know God started that fire? It was a divine fire that got started. And then He said to the priests, the, the, the Levites, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out. Every morning their responsibility was to stoke that fire up where it would burn the rest of the day. So, that was their, so the, the fire of God had to be attended to and had to be kept by the priests. And you and I have a fire in us that we need to keep going. Now this is from the Amplified Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. And this is Paul speaking to Timothy. That, that, that's why I would remind you to stir up now, 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 here's the explanation of what that, what that means from the Greek, that word stir up. Rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of my hands. So when, when Paul laid hands on Timothy and he was filled with the Spirit, okay? That thing on the inside of him that, that was released, that thing that was there, that was released, what Paul was saying, you need to keep that going. You need to rekindle the embers of that fire that were planted there. Fan that flame. Fan it. You've got to keep this thing burning. So we have a very important role to play in the work of the Holy Spirit. We have to let Him do what He wants to do. Now, as I said before, you have to always remember, fire has a tendency always to go out. So you have to remember that you have to do something to keep it going. Now, how many has ever seen uh, the, the fire triangle? There's three things that requires that is required for a fire. The chemical response Reaction that is fire. Three things are required. Oxygen, heat, and fuel. When a fireman goes in uh, to a fire situation, they understand these three things, and they understand that they have to, if you can stop the oxygen, you'll stop a fire from burning. You stop the heat, you can stop a fire. Fuel, and if you can do all three, you can, you can put a fire out. So firemen uh, know, and you know, you know if a, if a pan's uh, uh, if, there's, if, if the pan's burning, you know to put the lid on it. What did you do? You just stopped it from getting any oxygen. You smothered it out. So you have these three different things required for a fire to burn. First of all, we need oxygen for a fire to burn. Once again, a, fire, a fireman knows that the, the way to stop a fire is to, uh, one of the ways is to stop it from getting an, a, a, an oxygen source. You know that. When, you, when, when somebody takes a fire extinguisher and they apply that to a fire, a, a lot of what they're doing is, you 
you're doing by using that fire extinguisher is you're smothering it. You're keeping it from getting oxygen. And when you throw that bucket of sand on that campfire, you're removing it from its source of oxygen. And so I want to say to you that, that when we apply this to the Holy Spirit, I want you to understand the Spirit of God, the presence of God, is always present. There's 21 the 21% 21 of the of the atmosphere that you breathe right now. Every breath you take, 21% of that is oxygen. That's a reality across this earth. There's going to be 21% of oxygen. You don't even need that much to live with each breath. But that oxygen is present. You can't see it. You can't necessarily feel it. But oxygen is present. And I want to say the Spirit of God is present. He's always present. He's always there. But we need to acknowledge that. We need to, we need to, we need to release that presence into our life. Now how do we do that? Well, I think the best way to do that is to worship. Yeah. Worship is a way that we say, God, I know you're real. God, I know you're present. God, I know who you are. And as we worship, what we do is we release our faith in the reality of His omnipresence, His always being present, His being present everywhere. So as we worship, we're, we're releasing our faith and we're releasing our ability to, to receive His presence. Amen. Yeah. So, so worship. But I would say we could add to that prayer, talking to Him, I mean, uh, hopefully you're not just talking to yourself or just talking out into the air, but, but when you pray, you're actually addressing the person of God. I mean, you're acknowledging His presence. And, and so as we do that, as we... Listen, He's enthroned in the praises of His people. He, he, listen, He comes where He is given, listen, that, that right of lordship. Amen. And so we enthrone Him as we worship Him. We give Him thanks. We're responding. And, and, and so, so I would say that, that when it comes to the oxygen part of the fire triangle, for us, it would be that presence. His presence. And we release that by our worship. Now, there's always a need for heat. Fire needs heat. When a fireman gets there, what's he going to do? First thing they're going to probably start doing is throwing water on that thing. They're cooling it down. They're reducing the heat. So, 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 so heat is, is important for a fire. Now, now I, I, I could have found 10 different sermons online with, with, in five minutes about this fire triangle and how it relates to the Holy Spirit. But I didn't do that. I said, Lord, you show me what you want me to know about this. And so when I began to think about the heat part of it, what's the heat? What is the heat? And you know, the thing that came to me was this. What came to me is that, if the, listen, when you read about Pentecost, okay, in the Bible, and you read about outpourings of the Holy Spirit, how often was it when everybody was together or when there was a group together. Now listen, uh, we grilled out night before last and, and I know that to, to, to be able to grill and I'm a coal guy, I am not a gas guy. I know that if I'm going to grill and I'm going to have a, a sufficient heat source and I'm going to have something there that I can grill some meat on, I'm going to have to put a group of coals together and get all these coals burning, and as they do that, that heat is, is, is multiplied. Now, if I were to take out one coal and single it out and move it over to one side, that thing's going to go out pretty quick. It's not going to burn a long time. But you put a bunch of coals together, then you're going to have, you're going to have a lot of heat. You're going to have more heat. It's going to burn longer. And I want to say to you, there, there is a, a corporate dimension to the Holy Spirit. There's a, he, he's not interested in taking you off into somewhere. Now there's times when you're going to need to be ministered to. Times you're going to need to hear from Him. Times you're going to need leadership and guidance in your personal life. But He's not interested in taking you over there and making you into a Lone Ranger. 
If you cut yourself off from the body of Christ, and this goes along with what we talked about last week, but if you cut yourself off from the body of Christ, you're cutting yourself off, I believe, from a major part of the flow of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, they were all with one accord in one place. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So I want to say to you, we need each other. We're like coals being brought together. And we produce heat. And then, of course, you have the fuel part of this. Fire needs fuel. It needs wood. It needs anything that will burn. It needs that. Uh, and so fuel is also important. Now, I got to thinking about this. What would this be for us? What would that be for me? What's the fuel I need to keep the fire of the Holy Spirit burning? What, what is that? thought about that long and hard. And, and this, is what, this is how the Lord kind of, the track He kind of put me on. And it has to do with our desire for it. Now you can read this, well it's the Word, or it's, it's this or it's that. Uh, a lot of folks say it's the Word. But, but I want to say to you, the Holy Spirit never goes where He's not welcomed. The Holy Spirit needs to be wanted. He doesn't force Himself on anybody. The Holy Spirit is, 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 is a perfect gentleman. But where you will desire Him, where you desire His presence in your life, where you look, listen, I want you to get this. Now Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, and out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Didn't he say that? Amen. Okay. So thirst, we've got, a, we've got a warning, we've got a sense of the need for him. But then he also says in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they shall be. So we've got to want Him. We've got to desire Him and give Him room to work in our lives. But we've got to do it for the right reasons too. It can't just be for some self-serving reason. I like the way it feels. They seem to really be enjoying this. And they're really happy. Uh, you know, I've got no problem with rejoicing in the Lord and having joy. But primarily why you want the Holy Spirit in your life is to make you what you need to be. That's right. I'm hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Amen. And so we want to have a life, certainly all of us here, we want to have a life that will glorify God. And we glorify God by letting God have His way in us and change us. And so I want you to get this. I want you to understand. If you want the fire, the, the work of the Holy Spirit to work in your life, you've got to, you've got to feed that fire. Amen. Every now and again, I, I, I used to try to do it more you know, than, I, than, I, than I do now, but but I'll say to my uh, kid, my grandkids, my kid, are you feeding the fire? Are you feeding the fire? Did you feed the fire today? Maybe you should ask yourself that. Maybe you should write it on a post uh, on an on a index card and put it on your mirror or something or a post-it note. And, Have you fed the fire today? But if you want to put this out, first of all, don't worship. If you, you a good way to smother out. The work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Just don't worship. If you want to, if you want to cut yourself off from the flowing and moving of the presence of God, which is the Holy Spirit, then don't go to church. You won't feel God very much. You, if you feel Him at all, just you can put Him out that way. You can hunger. Uh, uh, or you could, you could, you could stop. You know, wanting Him. Stop. Desiring Him, stop giving Him room. So do you understand? We can quench, which means to put out. You never put Him out exactly. There's still a number down there. You dig around, you can find it. But, but you, you cause in your life by, by your disobedience to the Word, by, by refusing the Word, you, these are all ways that we can, we can reduce, di diminish that spiritual fire uh, within us. Now I want you to take note of this now. When Paul was feeding that fire, when he went and got that wood, we, you, you all know the story. My mama one time, my, my dad used to do everything he could to save money. And we had wood burning heat for I don't know how long in my house. We had this big wood burning heater. So of course you know what that means. 
I'm going out to get the wood or, or somebody else is going to get the wood. Uh, but, but we're feeding that thing. So Mama, we went back home one time and Mama told us a story about how she went out there and grabbed a great big armload of wood, come in, and there was a snake in it. Bit her on the arm, you know, it's not, not, you know, it wasn't poisonous, but, but anyway, uh, uh, but that was fire there. Where, listen, when Paul started feeding that fire, when he started to do it, when he took that wood, what did the snake go after? What was feeding? Yeah, is that what was feeding the fire? The the devil doesn't want you to keep this fire burning. And so he's going to he's going to he's going to do everything he can to keep you from feeding this fire. He doesn't want you to worship. He doesn't want you to go to church. He doesn't want you to desire that the Lord change you. He wants you to give up. So so he's going to attack. And what are, what are we going to do now when he attacks? What are we going to do? Well, what I would say to you: keep building the fire. That's right. Paul just shook that thing off. He shook it off into the fire. He let the fire deal with it. And so that's what we've got to do. Don't let the don't let the don't let that serpent, as he comes to stop you, poison you. Well, this ain't working, and, and I've got this issue now, and this person offended me, and, and uh, you know, on and on. Uh, you, you know, when the attack comes, sometimes we'll let that poison have its way and, and work in us and keep us from feeding the fire. So feed the fire. Let the fire deal with the devil. Devil comes and hits you hard, just throw your hands up, start praising the, the Lord for how good he is. Amen. Yeah. Just start thanking the Lord that, that when, the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. Amen. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God will come and help you and fix you in your life. So I want to say to you uh, that you and I have a responsibility to keep this fire burning. Now let me, let me just give you some application here. First of all, if you want to keep a fire burning in your life, acknowledge Him. Be a worshiper. Amen. Be a worshiper. This morning I got up and I said, now, bro, brother, I call, I call myself Brother Jesse. Did y'all know that? Brother Jesse, <laughs> now you've got a big responsibility here to, to, to minister the Word of God to the people of God. So you've got to minister to the people. And see, that weighs on me all week long. It builds, 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 builds. So I've got this weight, this, this good weight, uh, 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 ministering what the word of the Lord would say. But I try to always remind myself when I wake up on a Sunday morning, Brother Jesse, you are first and foremost a worshiper. That's right, amen. You're going to church to worship God. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. So what, that's what we need to always amen. remind ourselves of. Second, get with other believers to worship and pray. Love them and be a blessing. Amen. The Spirit of God is not going to make you into some selfish, self-centered believer. Right. It doesn't work that way. Amen. He's not going to do that. So if that's all you're interested in is me, 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 you're going to be cutting the Holy Spirit. You're going to be cutting off part of what a fire needs to burn. Yeah. Say love. <laughs> we, we need to be strong on this. <laughs> Surrender. Humble yourself and live for Him obediently. You know, have you ever seen a low pressure uh, on the, on the, when the weather comes on and they show you that low pressure? And, 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 and what happens with a low pressure is stuff goes to the low pressure. That's where wind is developed. That's where things move. Is in that low. You need to be spiritually a low pressure. You need to be a low pressure area. Because if you are, if you'll humble yourself, surrender to Him, He comes rushing in. And the more you do that, the more you get to the place that you realize you're nothing without Him and, and you need Him desperately, I tell you, He comes flowing in like a mighty rushing wind. Amen. Give Him the keys to your house and let Him be Lord. We want Him to be a visitor. We make Him a guest. Yeah. Well, it's okay if he comes in every now and again, but 
But we need to make him the Lord. And then I would end it by saying, let's expect and experience his presence. I expect his presence. God's a faith God who works on faith. Amen. I believe God's real. I believe God will show up. Amen. I expect it because I believe in what he's promised. And then we can experience his presence. Amen. Amen. So let's put these things to work. How many needs a great big fire burning in their life? Ooh, amen. How, many needs a, how many needs the Spirit of God to, to make you a passionate, amen. zealous, changed, transformed believer? Is that you? Amen. Well, then let's stand.